and we're back to learning Inkscape and this time I'm going to show you how to create a bar graph. You can render that as well or create it manually. Let me first render it. So this is the way to organize the values that you want to add. So you always have to separate them with a comma. So let me add one comma and I add strawberries and the value for it 50. You don't need these empty spaces, so let me get rid of them. And you don't need an empty space here as well. So we've got strawberries 50, which would be one bar, and PS4, which would be another one. Let me copy this one, so I press Ctrl A and Ctrl C. And then I go to Extensions, Render and Nice Charts. And here under data, we've got the direct input. You can also import your data via a CSV file. And if you want to put it directly into it, let me just paste it with the 50 strawberries. And I go to charts. And with the drop down, I've got the bar chart selected. And if I click on live preview, you can see we've got it all here. If I change the strawberries to 10, it's rendered in real time. Let me delete it. I will stick to the default here, so these four values. Let me show you under charts what we can add for the design. For example, we can make the bar length smaller, cut it in half, for example. The bar width is obviously the width of the individual bars. We don't have a pi radius here, this is for pi charts. Well, we've got a bar offset, which is the distance between the bars, so if I set that to zero, Are stacked directly next to each other. There is no stroke width here, and this is also for the pi chart, but we've got an offset between the chart and the labels. So you can see we can adjust this distance here. There's no chart title, so we can't change anything here. We've got a couple of defaults for the colors. I'll just pick the SAP that looks best, I think. can also reverse the color scheme and you can add a drop shadow which looks like this. What you may want to check is the show values box here. So if you add that, you get the exact values for each bar added. Let me click on apply and you can see these are still individual objects that are rendered. So the drop shadow in behind the bars. For example, we can select this one for the apples and then go to object, fill and stroke and change the color. So it's treated like a regular rectangle. Let me delete that. And I'll show you how you could do that manually if you don't like to render it. Rendering it should be quicker though, so if you're just looking for a quick and simple solution, you can stop watching this video. But if you want to do it manually, just create a rectangle and make it a height of 100. We'll just pick that for 100%. And the width doesn't really matter, but I make it 50. I create a rectangle at the bottom so that I can snap it to. Enable snapping should be checked. Then I press Ctrl D to copy these bars. And if you enable snap to path, you can rearrange them easily like this. And you can add more rectangles to have kind of like a placeholder for the distance between these bars. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to find the snapping spot. But if you use the arrow keys on top, you're good to go. So if the second bar doesn't have 100%, just go down to whatever value you have. In this case, I'll make it 80. And then always press Ctrl D to copy the placeholder. Press Ctrl D on the bar. 
resize it to the next value, like 50. Reposition that. So this is the process to create them manually. But as I've said, the rendering should be in most cases what you need. It's way quicker, way easier to do. So when you've got what you want here for the manual bars, you just once again select these individual bars and then go to object, fill and stroke and then play around with the color wheel on the fill to change the colors. And then you can use the type tool and press T for that or click on the A down here and then type in whatever names you want. And, the values. and this is how you can create these bar graphs in Inkscape. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.